What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 RC channel. We're gonna talk about the B7. We've had it for over a month now. We've been to multiple race locations and had a lot of fun with this thing. We're running, you know, regular carpet. We're also running on our indoor track with uh, jumps and stuff, of course. Um, running on slicks indoors, which has been a real treat to learn and tune and everything else. So we've uh, had a lot of fun with this. We've broken a few things. Some of the things just like shake your head and you're like damn like why didn't associated fix this stuff um we know they came out with like revision two or three of this kit now with updated d blocks and a diff diff cover and maybe they fixed the transmission issues who knows but that's just kind of where we're at overall i've had a great experience with it we'll say like a seven out of ten which is a pretty good score in my book because a 10 would be perfection so let's just get to it first of all here it is my setup we're running a 21.5 open motor class i've got the r1 uh 21.5 super short in there which has been like a great motor uh the key to this car has been that motor which is a little bit smaller and lighter and the three geared r1 transmission back there with all of their slipper eliminator and all of that kind of stuff running a quite a bit of the r1 parts on here which is one of the great things about the b7 is that it's such a popular kit that like every rc manufacturer it seems like is gonna make anything for this thing that they can cut machine tool or anything else so the part support and aftermarket stuff that you're going to be able to get for this is always going to be amazing but as i demonstrated in one of my last videos is why wouldn't you buy stuff like say from r1 and versus a factory team part when the r1 stuff is probably better or just as good it's black which is cool and it's cheaper so anyway let's get back to looking at the car here up front this thing the whole new steering geometry i'm running pretty much kit setup still up front i did remove a couple of the front ball stud spacers in the front to get a little bit more initial steering running kpi2 so in the out of the box you're pretty much going to get everything that you need to run this thing and have no problems with it out of the box i did go to a softer spring i don't know if it's necessary softer spring in the rear i don't know if that's necessary but when it comes to the shocks, it's just the stuff about AE that drives me crazy. There's not a single team driver out there or any setup sheet besides the kit that really you see that people are running anything but 2.5 uh, pistons. And what do they give you in the kit? They give you the twos. So, you know, it's been proven that this 13 millimeter shock package works better with the 2.5 pistons and then you kind of pick your hole size i just go for like 1.9 and then two in the rear and i just thicken up the oil a little bit or you can go with the lighter oils the smaller holes drill them out however you want to do it it's up to you how you want to do that stuff so i don't that's just parts that it's like just give us those and you know the machined internals versus the kind that you cut off now i know that like they already made it and everything and it's in the shock rebuild kit it's kind of like it's a cheap part throw it in the box um we're going to be all over the place in this video by the way if you can't figure this out already um, when it comes to underneath the electronics tray you know you don't get a servo weight you get an aluminum weight to put underneath your electronics here but you know you still need more weight down low and they've got this stuff all fits all of the six series cars the six four and everything else so i've got the steel one underneath here that i've had and you also can see that i have a brass battery plate to go underneath my battery now the reason i use that is for two reasons one it gives me a little bit more stability and two it allows me to easily tune to go back and forth between the slick racing car setup and the regular off-road pin tire setup when i go to the off-road pin tires they're smaller and it's literally like a 27 28 gram difference i put this in and i'm like two or three grams uh overweight for that when i move to the bigger thicker you know slick tires that have the heavier um you know just more tire and foam and stuff like that in there the weight goes up so actually all i got to do is take that out and i'm still above 1474 but i'm like you know right there three or four grams whatever so having that allows me to just use one battery um i don't have to go back and forth between like say a 46 4700 and my 4400 r1 the little 60 dollar one which has been running 
freaking great. Like, I can't believe that battery is like 60 bucks. So it's really, really awesome. But uh, yeah, that's kind of like, we'll, you know, still stick with the front end here. Um, you can see like on the back that I changed the shocks out uh, to the Kashima coated. You know, it doesn't really make a difference in the chrome shafts. Got chrome shafts up here. I had these before, so I put the chrome shafts in them. Bought these shock bodies. These shock bodies are on back order. Who knows when they will be back in stock. So I got those uh, ready to go on back order to go ahead and replace those. So, you know, it all works. It's matchy-matchy and all that kind of stuff. Carbon stuff annoys me again. Even though this front bulkhead top plate is redesigned, um, I put the carbon one in and it broke. And I went back to the factory uh, plastic one. And the things that I'm noticing with the carbon stuff again is that you only get like a couple times to thread that stuff in and out. Like the threads just don't cut in it. I don't know if it's because the screws are so generic that they come with or if it's just the material. I mean, I had pretty nice titanium J concept screws or whatever in my 6.4 and 6.3, and they did the same thing. So when it comes to the carbon parts, you know, they're gonna lower your down your weight, but you're only gonna get so many uses out of the thing. And that's kind of like a, a problem. It's like, why didn't they just fix that? Um, when it comes to other things, like let's look at the back. Some people have said, you know, you're running, you know, a three gear transmission, you're losing that extra like centimeter, eight millimeters of motor forward position. So you might as well be running, uh, you know, a six, four. Um, and I totally disagree with that because this car drives way better with way less put into it than my six, four ever did. And you really can notice changes a lot more. Now I know I'm a lot more of a seasoned driver than I ever have been just with the on road and everything that we've been doing the past year and a half, but it's pretty nice that you can actually, you can you tune yourself into this car a lot more with the setup changes and everything that's going on with it. Uh, the big downside again, it is back to these, uh, the quality of these parts and these plastics. Now, I don't have, this is the carbon uh, infused transmission case, but you know, I've got the R1 in there and I wanted to like, just try it to see if I, you know, am I really missing out on the B7 experience? But let me tell you what I'm missing out on. I'm missing out on basically going in here and filing things down, sanding things down and all this, the rest of the stuff, even with this one, not just the stock plastic to make this a free transmission case. And I've already had to do that with the top transmission case uh, part right there, which is the other carbon part that comes with that piece of the kit. Um, you have to like sand down the top of it where the top of the diff is. And you also need to sand down. You're also gonna need to sand out the bottom of the top of that case. And it's gonna be kind of like the same thing that you see uh, here on the transmission case. There's kind of like that little recessed lip right there at the bottom of the screen that the diff spacers uh, go into. If you don't sand out like that lip and make it skinnier, when you basically put everything together, it squishes that and it compresses down on that bearing and it binds things up. So luckily, that's all I have to worry about is I have to worry about that part right there on top of the of the diff and i have to worry about where the diff actually goes on the very top of the case now i've seen pictures and stuff of people's transmissions that literally are totally just messed up where like idlers are locked and like bearings are spinning and bearings aren't spinning but the idlers are spinning on the i mean all kinds of different crazy stuff that you see that's going on with these cars. And I'm not going to throw any shade at them because like it definitely is a thing. The first week or two I ran this car, I slapped it together and just took it out there and was racing it. And I'm just like, why is this car so slow? Like, you know, it never really occurred to me until I was like playing around with my ESC and the bench that like, man, like that drag brake looks really aggressive or I don't have any drag brake in there, but it looks like I've got like 50%. And that's just because all of this stuff is binding up and need corrected it. So will they correct it in the new kit that was, uh, came out? Who knows? Like they won't actually put a list out of what parts all that they corrected because they probably don't want people buying at all. They want people to 
buy all the spares up and then release a new one. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking that they're being very mean and they're really not. So when it comes to the rest of the car though, again, it's responded to everything that I've asked it to do. And tuning wise, even though it is a lot different than the B64, a lot of the stuff that we did, at least that I did on the 64, I've tried on here. And most of it's worked out very well. Like if you need more initial steering, start, you know, it's just basic buggy stuff uh, that you learn. Um, having the different uh, wheelbase back here with the longer arms and the pill configuration is a little bit weirder just because of how, where everything kind of sits. But that's about it. I'm running, I think, uh, three degree toe in now and at minus two on in a squat. So like I'm one degree out on the C blocks and one degree to the bottom corner on the D block. And those of course are the, all the R one ones because the ones that came originally with this kit were just totally trashed. Um, one bad thing I was just thinking about is the steering rack up here. That is the factory team rack. And that is, you know, I had already bought that before I noticed that uh, R one like they literally came out with a rack or I would have bought theirs, but this stuff is, uh, you know, it's just, it's not, it's made out of like powdered metal and you need to do, honestly, when you put this stuff in, you need to use some kind of like red thread locker or something, something that really will tighten that stuff down a lot, because I've noticed that these screws are starting to back out again. And what happened that last uh, time I had to replace one of these racks in the 6.4 and I just said, screw it, went back to plastic, was that these, you know, all the wrecking and it takes so much force and impact right there is that the threads were coming loose and it basically just wallowed out the entire hole and like ruined the tap. And then, you know, it's either a new rack or go back to plastic. So I will go back to plastic again or go with the R1 if that happens on this again. Um, one quick tuning note that I always see every setup sheet I've looked at again, besides the kit has two millimeters of spacing right there on the steering link instead of one. I don't know why I added two there and I haven't noticed any problems or any indifferences on it at all. Um, again, 2.5 pistons, softer springs in the front, softer in the back. And of course I'm running carpet. You know, if you're running dirt, none of this stuff is going to matter anyway. Um, 60 K in the back, uh, with the diff, uh, with four gear, just because, you know, I don't care. I've already got like the ultralight screws and the ultralight diff uh, plastic pieces in there and everything else. So my drivetrain is really nice. Uh, the slipper eliminator with their own uh, spur gears from R1 is really freaking nice. Like it's super duper nice. Um, the only thing I didn't like about that is they sold it with a kit pin and then they released another ultralight pin to go with it but like you know everybody's in the business to make money which again associated hopefully we'll figure out one of these days that they can either throw all this stuff in the box and jack up the kit and not sit on a bunch of parts or they're gonna you know i think this is going to be the car because right now not very many of these companies have are flush with cash to just go out and start innovating and dropping cars. I mean, you don't see very many manufacturers making as big a moves as associated is right now. And it's because they've got the cash to do it. Um, they've got American market and this is where all of the cash is. Um, sorry, you know, just the way it is, uh, the rest of the world. So I think once they see how much of their factory team, parts revenue goes down because of people like R1 and Exotech, 1UP, Kyosho. All these people are making like B7 parts that they are probably going to get more aggressive and maybe release like a, kit, a factory team kit, or maybe they will lower the price or give us a better reason to buy their parts over another third party. So overall, the vehicle has been great. We'll have some running footage of some more stuff coming up in a couple of weeks. I wanted to wait until we got some more time on the car. Just see how things go. Oh, yeah. One other thing. I'm always just coming up with one other thing. These new uh, carpet bumper shock tower protectors, 
getting these thing getting this one on and off is a superior pain in the ass it just i don't care what they say it sucks to get this thing on and off uh luckily you don't ever have to take it off i think they actually if i'm not mistaken i think they've actually already redesigned it and brought out a different shock tower or somebody did that basically had a screw right there to just screw it on the rear one isn't bad because you really never have to take it off it's just kind of like there and it's held on by the bolts uh which by the way the bolts in the back to hold that on really aren't big enough they'll kind of like pull up and out on it right there as you can see it kind of pulling away a little bit so you gotta like you know put some washers in there and pull that stuff up luckily uh the big wings here will take pretty much a, most of that impact back there and keep this stuff from like gouging out you know your carpet because we don't want to ruin our carpet um if you're gonna go with the r1 transmission make sure you order extra of their fan mounts uh these things are they literally break looking at them um i broke like two of them already there's just a weak spot you know i don't know they need they need to be i don't know what they need to be made out i think they need to be made out of like tpu or something and not like this harder uh plastic that they're like 3d printing these out of or injection molding them out of or something so just a flexible plastic to just hold it there would actually be just fine um you can see it's a really good uh fit and tight fit up against the body and all that but you know I just it, it you i've broken a couple of them they just break right here and it basically became like an extra part that you can buy on the website and it must have been because people were breaking them like me so i don't feel that bad so that's it man you guys got any questions about the whole buggy or anything uh let me know um Good luck. Share your setup. Share your info with your friends. Make them faster. Do all that fun stuff. So we'll talk to you all later. Peace.